Okay, so um, I would like to express our sincere gratitude to FASCAN and PIDS for uh, giving us the opportunity to conduct this study. So again, uh, mabuhay po sa ating lahat and good afternoon. I am Marigel Bautista, faculty from Central Sun State University and a proponent of the study title Analysis of uh, the Readiness of Philippine Tourism Enterprises for Trade Liberalization in Asia Pacific. So this is together with Dr. Jean Paulo Rivera and our lead proponent, Ms. Ayla Lair Gutierrez, both from Asian Institute of Management and Andrew Elton Center for Tourism. So the Philippines has been strongly emerging as a rising uh, tourism destination and the industry needs to prepare for its eventual recovery like what we are currently experiencing right now, prompting it to welcome a surge of both local and foreign tourists. So the concept of tourism enterprises is the facilities, services, and attractions which involve uh, and uh, in tourism but not limited to the following. We have accommodation, adventure and recreation, attractions, events and conferences, food and beverage, souvenirs, and handicraft, which is being manned or facilitated and assisted by the following, like DOT, PCBC, TESA, and the respective uh, local government units. So the study has focused on tourism because of its important role for many economies, particularly in terms of its contribution to employment, entrepreneurship of local communities, the GDP, and the generation of foreign exchange, of which there have been various studies that have uh, discuss trade liberalization and the concepts and implications of RCEP. However, there is no literature yet to support uh, the indicators of uh, preparedness of Philippine tourism enterprises for the impacts of trade liberalization brought about by RCEP and CPTPP. So to provide a background, especially with the public, the CPTPP is a comprehensive uh, multilateral FTA between the 11 countries. And among its key features are comprehensive market access, fully regional agreement to facilitate development of production and supply chains among members, cross-cutting trade issues, and so on. While on the other side, RCEP is another uh, proposed, um, I mean, it's RCEP is another proposed FTA involving many of the same countries as the CPTPP, which focus on economic and technical cooperation, the SM, SM, uh, MSFEs, custom procedures, and trade facilitation, and so on. Okay, so such backdrop on RCEP and CPTPP, as well as its anticipated costs and benefits for the Philippines, particularly the tourism industry, motivated us to explicate on the potential opportunities that the tourism enterprises can harness while being consignant of their readiness to participate and caution themselves. So since the focus of our study is the readiness of the Philippine tourism enterprises for the implications of these RTAs, there is a need to underscore the continuously expanding role of the tourism industry in economy, identify opportunities and threats to the tourism industry and assess the readiness of the tourism enterprises in participating. So hence, we address the research problem, specifically on how can uh, tourism enterprises prepare themselves for the impacts of trade liberalization brought about by RCEP and CPTPP. And in addressing this, uh, our general objective is to assess the readiness of the Philippine tourism enterprises to exploit opportunities and mitigate threats brought about by trade liberalization, which specifically we were able to address the following. First is to identify and review the anticipated impacts of trade liberalization to assess whether tourism stakeholders are ready and capable of exploiting opportunities and mitigating threats. Third is to recommend strategies for tourism enterprises on harnessing the opportunities. And lastly, to provide analytical information for policymakers on the kind of assistance that tourism enterprises would need to exploit the opportunities and counter the limitations brought about trade liberalization. So in furthering the existing discourses on trade agreements and tourism, this study evaluated the commitments on tourism underscored in the selected tourism agreements in Asia-Pacific or the APAC. 
namely the RCEP and CPTPP. More specifically, the respective opportunities and threats to Philippine tourism industry and the tourism MSMEs were identified. So in order to assess whether the tourism MSMEs can effectively participate and utilize the commitments under the respective trade agreements, the readiness of the various stakeholder groups such as in accommodation, tour operators, food and beverage, transportation, and retail were examined through an integrated action plan for SME development or the SPAN framework. The SPAN framework encompasses key areas of business development needs such as the human resource development, the access to finance, market access and development, technology and technology sharing, access to information, and alongside with the existing policy environment. So in addressing our research objectives, the methodology is designed to follow an IPO process following a four-phase multi-tier design framework. The commitments on tourism underscored in RCEP and CPTPP, the insights from the various stakeholders serve as inputs that are subjected to document review on phase one. Focus group discussion has been facilitated during the phase two of the study and KII with the phase three respectively. Uh, so to generate information and the data gathering methods are further subjected to validation, which is in phase four. So to supplement um, in, uh, in the scope of limitation, given the logistical limits posed by the pandemic situation in which this study was conducted, majority, if not all, uh, data gathering procedure were conducted online and virtually through various digital platforms. Okay, so our document review is geared towards laying the foundation in addressing our research problem and objectives through an assessment of how the external and internal uh, environment can change given the CPTPP and RCEP, as well as the examination of the Philippines' domestic characteristics and capacities. Hence, at the end of this phase, as what is presented, which is the process reflective of both internal and external environment. And of which the study have also uh, further evaluation in the SWOT analysis, use, utilizing a SWOT matrix, matching uh, and strategizing the opportunities and threats with the strengths and weaknesses. Okay, so the first underscored in the FGD is an intensive capacity building program that will train the various value chain members of the tourism. It's really worth emphasizing repeatedly that tourism is neither just an industry nor a group of some related industries. It is a grouping of many industries that work together to create experience. So consumers come to the product where the location or the destination itself is part of the product and creating a spending worthy is conditioned on the experience that each valid chain member will contribute. Hence, a unified training is really deemed to be necessary. So for instance, Philippines is positioning itself as a farm tourism destination and among others. But interest in farming among the population is really limited. The country is also promoting its top tourism destination, highlighting its nature-based and cultural assets. But the authenticity can be questioned because the locals are not active nor trained in showcasing their destination. So together with the hard infrastructure and some of which may be present and the soft infrastructure also has to be developed. Training can cover both hard and soft skills and all of this can help uh, can be helpful to the tourism industry and tourism-related MSMEs in catering to the demands of an expanded and tourism activities brought about by the Philippines' participation in RCEP and CPTPP. Next, during the phase three, um, key experts and authorities from the tourism industry are unanimous also in seeing immense opportunities for tourism brought about by RCEP and CPTPP. And thus, these agreements have the capacity to stimulate trade activities. Membership in such trading agreements can help invite businessmen and investors to come to the Philippines for business and leisure or leisure, like what we are uh, doing, or the leisure travel. So the business travel segment can transform into a leisure travel segment that can increase yields from tourism as business travelers stay and explore other parts of the Philippines. So likewise, because tourism is a value chain, the food and beverage sector can also benefit from the increased demand. As part of the consumption expanding of the visitors, this sector can also provide high-quality products, drive improvement, and upgrade the local sector. 
This is a link between the trade and tourism that needs to be strengthened and be seen as an opportunity rather than a threat. So many stakeholders, particularly at the enterprise and frontline uh, levels, view that Philippines is not yet prepared for, tra uh, for the liberalized market uh, marked by the tougher competition. However, aside from competition, these trading agreements can compel tourism stakeholders in the country to elevate the quality of goods and services and to improve existing product offerings. Hence, um, trade liberalization can be seen as a motivation to upgrade and do better, which will benefit the entire economy. So to prepare for uh, to prepare the stakeholders for the implications of these trading agreements, our key informant from the regional tourism offices has also emphasized that proper communication could greatly streamline understanding at the local level, even at the destination level, of the benefits of the costs and the costs of participating in RCEP and CPTPP. So specifically, the commitments and policies should be properly communicated and honestly explained to everyone, including those stakeholders on the ground. That is, they must gain awareness first on what trade liberalization is all about, what concepts encompass this, and what they could really gain from this. Awareness is a necessary condition for them to understand their involvement and how they can make the most out of it at the community level. So this has been captured by the FGD findings and readiness for trade liberalization is conditioned on awareness of key stakeholders of what is in store for them. Okay, so a document review is validated from the responses of the stakeholders and experts reveal the readiness of uh, Philippine tourism MSMEs and trade liberalization alongside value for experience. So having the potential to compete and to elevate products and services, Philippine tourism value proposition has to be augmented and set with reinforced policies, preventive measures, and action plans. Okay, so proceeding now with the summary and conclusion. During the focus group discussion, there was an apparent lack of awareness about RCEP and CPTPP. While some key stakeholders have an idea about it, they, they admit it, though it's not that deep. Hence, the FGD became an avenue for them to be made more aware about the salient details of RCEP and CPTPP, allowing them to see the benefits as well as the costs. So their responses have indicated a unanimous hesitation and worry about the country's participation in these trading agreements. However, they are open to changing their perspective if the following conditions would be present. First would be the infrastructure development. Second is planning. And lastly will be capacity building. With these elements in place, their confidence would be reinforced because they are equipped to deliver at par or above par the tourism uh, experience to so an increased tourist influx. So at this point, our FGD results support the findings and argument of our document review. Our document review, the FGD and the KII support and complement each other and the KII validated and built, up, built on the findings of the FPG while um, the FGD provided the primary data to the secondary uh, data gathered from the document review. While we are expecting differences in the required preparations and assistance of tourism stakeholders for RCEP and CPTPP, given their varying backgrounds, expertise, and priorities, we have seen a convergence in perceptions among them. So the common denominators center are on infrastructure, planning, and capacity building. So this areas that these are the areas that the national government can focus attention and resources on. Okay, so for the recommendations, in order to address issues in relation to information asymmetry, communication campaigns may be prioritized to increase awareness about trade liberalization. And one of the ways to jumpstart this for the government is to conduct several public fora, conferences, and discussion tables with experts, um, authorities, policy makers, and even academicians with the goal of addressing the stakeholder concerns and raising awareness about this topic. So with the help of the private sector also, the government may utilize media, both uh, traditional and digital or the social media to disseminate information effectively. So to facilitate the successful transition of the tourism industry from the pandemic situation, both the national and the local government actors must continue to ensure safe travels 
sustainable operations, and of course, more resilient stakeholders. This can be done through the enhancement in both hard and soft infrastructure, and these are all necessary to provide a seamless and superior tourist experience to visitors marked by the Filipino brand of service that is unique to the Philippines. Hand in hand with uh, promotional activities, infrastructures must be in place to fulfill um, its products promise to tourists. And that is indeed more fun in the Philippines. So finally, ensuring the readiness and competitiveness of tourism stakeholders is equally important. Government agencies, as well as the private sector in the tourism value chain, may invest on capacity building programs that will enhance the way tourism is delivered to the travelers, tourists, and visitors, whether for business or leisure. A trained manpower across the tourism value chain guarantees the delivery of a seamless and superior tourist experience to visitors. And for an, an inclusive and all-encompassing human resource development, training must be diffused across the entire tourism value chain. So this will enhance the confidence of the stakeholders and frontliners to make tourists coming back to the Philippines because of the unique Filipino brand of service. And that ends our presentation. Thank you. Maraming salamat po at mabuhay po ulit tayong lahat.